Welcome to High Society with Paxton Quigley. As we come to the end of Black History Month and reflect on the contributions and the achievements of Black leaders, Black business people, and Black women, we believe Black History Month is a good time to look at how racial disparities are playing out in the cannabis industry. Many of you may not know, but only 4% of cannabis businesses are owned by African Americans. We also know that arrests for marijuana possession occur at a rate nearly four times higher among blacks than whites. And even though whites, it's different, it's, or I should say it's not different in terms of consumption rates. They're exactly the same or nearly the same. So, as we all know, the uh, legal cannabis industry is exploding all over the United States, as well as the world. And the reality is that white folks are the ones who continue to profit. Now with us today to discuss this and her own company is Dr. Kirsten Shepard Ahmad. She's president, CEO, and founder of the Texas-based Pain Stoppers, which is rather a, a cool kind of name. I like it a lot, Pain Stoppers. Dr. Kirsten is also a member of the Minority Cannabis Association, Texas Normal, which is we all know about, and Drug Policy Alliance. Dr. Ahmed, I am told we can call you Dr. K, so welcome to High Society with Paxton Quigley. And Thank you. Certainly. Before we get started, Started on the interview, I'd like to talk about what's happening in Texas since the massive power outages. I know you um, are located in Austin. Can you give, give us a short rundown about what's happening now? Well, now um, the power has been restored, thankfully, uh, to almost everyone. Uh, but you know, uh, there's still food issues with um, the stores getting the supplies ramped back up after we were shut down for basically a week. Um, the water issues that we're dealing with now, some counties are still under boil notices uh, and trying to get a plumber um, is almost impossible because of the damages that have been done in so many, so many homes. Uh, they're still not certain what the death toll is because individuals are still being found who have suffered because of the hypothermia. So uh, one of the great things about Texas is, you know, it's a community and you're seeing the love that the neighbors and the nonprofit organizations and just everyone's trying to do to help one another. Uh, but it's, it's going gonna, it's gonna to take a moment. And I think one of the most disappointing things is how underplayed the preparedness was uh, for as far as communicating what the expectations should have been, what to prepare for. And, you know, just simply stating it's a winter storm advisory. Um, they, they should have told us that tech is, is getting a blizzard. And I think individuals would have been much better prepared. Interesting. Well, I'm happy to hear that things are getting better and obviously things are okay with you. So that's nice to hear. And I hope that your, your patients are all fine too. Uh, so let's, let's start with uh, cannabis now and uh, learn more about you. Uh, Dr. K, I've read that Black and Latino female entrepreneurs entrepreneurs, excuse me, are the fastest growing category of business owners, yet they still receive only a fraction of the funding and they get very little access to resources that can help them grow their businesses. And yet many of these women are persisting. What is your opinion about what's happening in the, in the uh, cannabis world when it comes to women? There's definitely a disparity in equality in, in the cannabis industry. There are 
few, very few women entrepreneurs in the industry. There are very few farmers in every single aspect of the industry. You don't see much representation. Um, and it's unfortunate because there are so many profits and so much potential of profits. Yet, if you look at our communities, we, we have the communities that have suffered the most. Women as a whole are underfunded frequently when it comes to business opportunities, business venture capitalism, whether it's leadership training. And the research shows that when there are women present in companies, whether it's as an owner or as board members, the companies thrive and they're much more successful. I believe yes. we need to be responsible and encourage and offer opportunities so that we can change what's been going on in this country for centuries. Now, do you think that women of color, uh, that this is gonna go on for a long time? Uh, what is your opinion? Do you see, do you see a light <laughs> at the end of the tunnel, so to speak? Or is this going to, do you think, continue for a while? There are, I, I do see a light at the end of the tunnel. Uh, one of the things that has always been strong in our community is we try to lift as we, as we climb. And so when one of us succeeds, we collaborate and share resources. We um, try and encourage and instill in others. So even though there's the disadvantages, we still make it happen. And we have been doing that for years. There's great organizations like the Minority Business Cannabis Association, which is a wonderful resource for women and minorities who are interested uh, in learning how to get into the industry, learning about uh, great business practices, um, positive uh, cannabis business practices and setting standards and, you know, also trying to find funding. Most recently, uh, Jay-Z, through one of his groups, has offered a grant program to try and help diversify the industry more by offering grants to minorities who are in the cannabis industry. And that's great. His, his, his venture capital, let me rephrase that. It's his venture capitalist group uh, that he's started to help change that. And hopefully more of the leaders, um, we're trying to help and impose more laws and regulations. And I, I do see light at the end of the tunnel. And one of the things that I see in our industry is the opportunity to help change things like the situation that happened here in Texas. We need to use more renewable resources and that can help with the deficiencies that we have with coal and some of the other petroleum-based products that we use. Interesting. So I'm happy to hear that you, you have a, a positive frame of mind. Now I'd like to talk about you. Uh, I know you're a doctor. Uh, what kind of a doctor, shall I say, uh, what your specialty is actually, and, um, and what encouraged you what happened in your life that you got involved in medical cannabis? My specialty is functional and regenerative medicine. I am a chiropractor and a massage therapist. And we, we treat the entire person. We don't compartmentalize healthcare. I've owned integrated practices and I help uh, launch other businesses for doctors through consulting as well, which integrates medical, chiropractic, acupuncture, massage, physical therapy, nutrition. And um, when you stop compartmentalizing healthcare and with so many individuals that suffer from chronic pain and chronic diseases, oftentimes there is not just one issue that they're dealing with. And so it's been amazing to be able to help and treat a patient collaboratively 
with the type of care that they need and offer it within one facility. How oh, interesting. Now, I had read uh, that uh, you came to uh, use uh, medical cannabis because of uh, your father's problem. Can you give us a, a, a short uh, talk about that and how uh, what you gave him did, did help him in terms of his pain? Yes, uh, my father, his name is, is Luke Shepard, was Luke Shepard, and he was suffering from mesothelioma, which is the asbestos cancer. The chemo and radiation made him nauseous. He was in a lot of pain and he didn't have an appetite. I knew about medical cannabis before, but of course, you know, you usually don't start investigating different types of treatment plans until you have a personal connection with it. And I, with his suffering, he didn't like what the opioids and the other pharmaceuticals that were prescribed to him were doing. It still wasn't helping increase his appetite or his pain. It just caused him to sleep. And so I had a few friends who uh, would send that sent me some of the oils um, and I just wanted to try and find anything that would help. And he said he was open to it. Um, as I started researching more into the cannabis, I learned that the CBD was actually the component that wouldn't give him that high feeling that he was not comfortable with. And we first started with the oils. He didn't like the taste of them, but we noticed progress. With my background as a massage therapist and, and being a healthcare provider, I knew that the largest organ is the skin. And I said, you know, let's try and, and rub it and see what happens. And it was just fantastic to see that it was still effective. And I started making topical mixes and applying them on him. And it helped not only minimize his pain, it helped increase his appetite and it gave him a better quality of life towards the end. I wish I would have discovered it sooner. One of the things that he said to me is, you know, this stuff really works and it helps and you should create something where you can help more people that are like me. I wanted to ask you, did uh, when you started, you know, massaging him with the oils and all that, did he start getting some kind of relief right away? Because I, I, you know, I talk to some people and they'll say no, uh, and then they'll even try a different product, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how, how did that go? Well, it was a trial and error experience. And I learned that not all of the, the oils were created the same and not all of the products that were available had the same type of responses. And I think that's one of the things that individuals need to consider as consumers, what type of products you're using, where they source from, because now there are products in convenience stores. Luckily, the products that we tried, there were a few that weren't as effective, but he did get some sort of relief. Once I discovered which products were faster acting, I was able to adjust those and start adding in different, different methods to help him achieve those goals of getting rid of the inflammation. So in, in a short, short answer, yes, some products do can give instant relief within 10 or 15 minutes, but it depends on what you are trying to achieve. So with him, we did primarily topicals, but I still kept him on a oral regimen of taking the oils because I felt that he needed to get the relief from the outside in and the inside out. That's very interesting. And if uh, our listeners out there uh, uh, are, are really listening they, and they do have uh, 
relatives or themselves who are having these problems. Uh, I think we've just got some very good advice from Dr. K that you should try uh, not only ingesting, but also uh, putting it on your skin because the skin is very important. Uh, from there, I'd like to ask you, you, you set up your company that's called uh, Pain Stoppers. Um, what kind of roadblocks did you have? Or, or didn't you run up against anything when you decided, okay, I am now going to go into business and, uh, and help people uh, as I help my father? Yes. Um, the, the main roadblocks that I had was where to start. And I early on um, hired a consulting firm in which they, and, and with the industry, since there's so many individuals trying to get into it, there's a lot of companies that promise and want to guide you, but oftentimes they want to take your money. And I had invested in a company that was going to help me do some R&D. And the calls, the retainer that I paid was exhausted within weeks with no results. At one point, they stopped even returning our calls. So there were challenges in knowing how to really go about breaking into the industry. What's legal? What type of insurance do you need? What, you know, what can you do within your state? Can I ship products? What type of labeling do you need for your products? So there was a lot of trial and error and hard knockdown lessons that I learned during the process. How long did that take? How long did that take till you, you know, could know that you, you knew what you were going to be doing? I mean, did it take months or did it actually take you uh, a year? It actually took me years. Um, I years. first, I first started testing products and, and wanting to launch the line in 2015. I also wanted to make sure the product that I put out was effective in itself. Um, I, anyone who would try it, I would give them samples. I had so many beta testers, <laughs> quite a few of you know my patients, friends, family. And I knew once I had some retired professional athletes call me about one of the products that their mother had given them and ask for more is when I really knew I was on to something. Like dad's opinion mattered, but when someone who's been through the gamut of injuries and, and pain and uh, being an a athlete and, and everything that you put your body through with training, that put the light on in my head. Um, I started developing that product and I made a, another product along with it, which I currently have a global patent that's pending uh, with the goal of what I would like to do with that product is pursue uh, some clinical trials and actually pursue FDA approval. But again, you know, finding capital and that type of venture is, 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 is very expensive. It's quite expensive. So I think those are, are more of the challenges that I had. I officially launched the product line with four of the products back in 2018. And one funny story that I often share is we had a launch in the office. And when I was explaining what CBD was and that it had low, T low or no THC, there was a 89 year old patient of mine and she and her friend actually booed me Ooh. and I was, <laughs> I was so surprised, but you know, just knowing that oftentimes there's things that we don't know and knowing where to go to find that information and speaking to other individuals that have developed products or uh, started different types of lines was quite helpful for me. So I found quite a few uh, consumer packaged and goods accelerators. I participated in organizations like 1863 Ventures and Eureka, which help entrepreneurs and guide them through finding resources so that they can start and scale their businesses. Interesting. Now, uh, so far, have you found 
uh, one type of problem that, uh, that people have that you could say, yes, this is definitely going to work for you? Can, you? can you go that far and say um, that one of the products will definitely work? Well, what I, what I just can say is everyone's body responds differently. And the two best sellers that we have in our product line are our roll-on and our salve. I have not had one person since 2018 ask for their money back. So I think that that speaks for itself. And when you can talk to individuals and guide them through, through products, depending on what their chief concern is and what their goals are, it makes it a little bit easier to help them select products that are not only viable, but something that can help them achieve the goals that they're trying to accomplish. Well, that's terrific. Now, I know that your, uh, your products are available online uh, and can be shipped uh, all over the country. Can you uh, tell us where they can find your, your products? so that our listeners can uh, find out what you have and what they want and can order from you? Yes, absolutely. Our website is painstopinc.com. That's www.painstopinc.com. We have our products available. If they would like a consultation, they can uh, put in a inquiry through the website and we'll be glad to guide anyone through who has any questions about the products. We can ship those throughout all of the uh, continental United States and in some countries. So um, one of the things that we definitely like to educate people on is whether or not whatever product you choose, make sure that it is viable. You can ask companies for their certificate of analysis so that you can see, because there's a lot of noise in the industry. And I think the confusion that most individuals have is how do I choose a great product? How do I know that what I'm spending my money on is what it says it is and that it's viable? And I highly encourage individuals to research the companies and the products that they're using so that they're not just purchasing snake oil. Well, thank you for all of that. You know, I'd like to continue talking with you, but we've, we've run out of time. Uh, please tell our listeners again uh, how they can get in touch with you. Please, your website. Our website is www.painstopinc.com. That's P-A-I-N-S-T-O-P-I-N-C.com. Thank you. Thank you so much for being on High Society with Paxton Quigley and for sharing your experiences of, of working in the medical marijuana industry in, in Texas. And uh, obviously because uh, your, your uh, products go around the country, I'm sure you've met a lot of uh, interesting people. And we hope in the future when you have uh, uh, more news about your company that uh, we can have you back on, on, on High Society. And I thank you very much. Thank you so much for having me. It's been an honor. Certainly, certainly. And folks, tell your friends they can listen to this broadcast on our website. It's called paxtonquigley.com. You know, we're a talk show, but we do listen, so feel free to get in touch with us. I'd also like to thank our listeners who've purchased my latest suspense novel. It's called Just Try Me, and it's available on Amazon. And listeners, Please, let's, let's stay safe. Wear a double mask. And if you have to, stay home. You know, we can beat this virus if we work together. Thank you. I'm Paxton Quigley. <laughs>